So welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers are the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Okay, it is getting to one of my favorite time of year, and that's when the summer yellow squash really start coming off. And this is the size I really like to pick them. This is when they're tender. They don't have so many seeds in them. And I just really like them this way. Now there's a lot of different ways to fry up squash. My mother-in-law would always slice it in little discs. And that's how she would fry it up. My grandma cut hers up in chunks. And that's why she would fry it up. And sometimes she'd even, if she had a Oh, uh, squash, maybe just a little bit bigger than this. She cut it into french fry, or like wedges, like french fry w wedges, potato wedges, about that that big. She cut them in, in fours, long ways, and uh, she deep fry it. And I just, I loved them. I just dearly love them when they're that thick, and because uh, I love squash. So, it's really simple. I've just been cutting them up in chunks, and I'm going to cut these up. And I've got me some buttermilk in my... Uh, my bowl over here and right now uh, the squash is it's doing good we've had plenty of rain uh, but really what we was needing was a little bit of dry weather and we needed a bunch of sunshine and that's what we've been getting the last several days so we're doing okay now I'm just going to take it that I now that I cut it in half long ways I'm just going to chunk it up in thirds just like that and uh, that's about the size of it, just like that. You'd probably call that an inch or so. And I'm just going to throw it in my buttermilk. You know, there's, we, growing up, we ate so much squash. And most of the time it was either deep fried, it was fried up in a skillet with okra and potatoes. It was sometimes roasted in the oven with other veggies. It was made into a squash casserole. So we've always grown and we've always ate yellow squash. So we got it in our buttermilk and I'm just gonna kind of swish it around a little bit here. And I've got a little bit of all-purpose flour If you want to use self-rising flour, it don't matter. I want to say just a little bit something about self-rising flour. Um, there's been some comments about us using self-rising flour. And self-rising flour has been around since about 1845, something like that. It's been around a long time. But you can make your own self-rising flour. And it's not any different than if you are making biscuits and you take your all-purpose flour, you put you some baking soda or baking powder in it and a little bit of salt and you've got self-rising flour. There's no difference. So I just want to throw that in there. I am going to get me, you can use a little bit. This is what this is going to do is this is going to make a really uh, crunchy outer crust. And I'm going to use, you can use a little bit of cornstarch or a little bit of arrowroot. And let me go over here and get it. And I've got just a little bit of arrowroot. And arrowroot works uh, just like cornstarch. Let me go over here, that's my wrong one. I'll get this right here in just a minute. That was my baking powder. I had baking powder on my mind, I guess. But I've got about a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. And I'm gonna put, whew, 
that's probably a little more, but I was going to put a couple of tablespoons of corn, or either cornstarch or arrowroot in it, one or the other. And I'm going to mix this up. And I had, I had about five of them uh, squash. They weren't real big. So I'm going to mix that up. And I'm just going to put me a little bit of garlic powder. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. I'm going to put me a little bit of pepper. Now you can put anything you want in here. You can put you some onion powder. I'm just going to mix that into my into my flour. And that's all we got to do there. And I've got me some oil. And I've got it heating up over here. Because I'm going to kind of deep fry it just a little bit. Probably got a little bit over an inch of oil in this in my pan here. So now that I've got my, my squash cut up and I'm rolling around all this good buttermilk, we're going to put it in our flour and just roll it around in that. And the way I like to tell, and there's several different ways, but the easiest way for me, because it's right here on my hands, if it's hot enough, I'm just going to splatter me just a little bit of flour right there. And if it just instantly starts uh, frying up and you can see it bubbling. A lot of people hold their hand over it. And if it gets too hot and you can't hold your hand over it, you know it's hot enough. That's what they say. So I'm going to put this one in there. Yeah. It's plenty hot. You know, squash is such a versatile uh, plant, vegetable. The good Lord knew what he was doing because um, there's so much you can do with it. There's a lot of people that just don't, they just don't like squash. Uh, I can't imagine not having my yellow squash. I grew up on it. It was just... Danny grew up on it. It was just something that we always had, especially in the summertime. It was just something you look forward to. Now, I do, um, I do freeze some of my squash. Uh, I put quite a bit up in the summertime. I do can some of it. I don't really care for it canned, but uh, you can use that in like uh, your squash casserole, stuff like that. But what I do, and as the summer goes on, I'll probably do a video on it, is... Uh, I roll it up like this in flour and stuff. I don't even blanch it. I do not blanch it. And my squash comes out of the freezer just fine every time to be fried up. And uh, I'll cut it up, roll it in cornmeal, a little bit of flour. And uh, I'll first I'll flash freeze it and then I'll put it in a bag. And it's good all winter long. I don't have a bit of problem with it. And I can show you that. As time goes on, we start really getting a bunch of squash. I've been out there in the garden, and the squash is just doing really good. I ain't picked no zucchini yet, but it's really looking good. It's, I think it's going to do good this year. Last year, it was, uh, it was pretty good, but I didn't get a whole lot. The weather was kind of wingy anyways. But, uh, but I'll tell you something I, I have been getting, and I'm still getting and that's fresh broccoli out of the garden. So proud of my broccoli. It's really done good. If you've never planted broccoli, broccoli it really is not a hard thing to grow. Um, it does better. I start mine way back in the in the cooler weather because I want it to mature and uh, do really well when it's still cool weather because it's a cold weather crop and I'll plant some more for this fall. But uh, it's getting some really you know pretty broccoli heads on it florets so it's doing good still you know when you get the last of your your veggies in your flour bowl and you got a little bit of buttermilk left over you can kind of pour that over that just makes it that much better but i'm going to wash my hands and then uh I'm going to watch this 
till it gets golden brown. See how golden those look? I like to get them good and brown. And that's where Grandma always got them good and brown. Good and crispy. And that cornstarch or that arrowroot, whichever one you use, really makes a difference on your on your crunch, on your either your squash or <clears throat> your uh, okra or just anything like that that you're deep frying. If you're deep frying shrimp or anything, it just gives it a little bit more crunch to it. You can see how good that looks. Good and brown. Reminds me of Grandma. She loved her fried squash. We're just going to put some more in there. And we're going to keep a deep frying. And then we're going to taste it. Man, that smells good frying up. This is some of the best fried squash you'll ever eat. It's crunchy. There's just enough bite there. It's not your little thin piece of squash that you fry up. It's really good stuff. And, of course, if Grandma made it this way, you know it's going to be good. I hope y'all like this recipe, and I hope you try it, because I think you're really going to like it. So God bless everybody. I hope y'all get a ton of vegetables out of your gardens this year. And we love y'all. Mm. How good?